Good afternoon and welcome. Today we're joined by Dr. Dhawal Shukla, Professor and Head of the Department of Neurosurgery at Nimhans. Dr. Shukla has been uh, teaching neurosurgery since 2009 and over 100 graduates, uh, resident graduates have passed out under his care and guidance. So, so has been known for his commitment to education, conducting both online and offline courses, following up with residents about their feedback for the course, as well as following up with graduates to track their career trajectory. So thank you for being here with us, sir, to share your valuable insights on how to choose an institute for your neurosurgery residency. So, sir, could you take us to the academic and training structure that is part of a neurosurgery residency? So, when you choose an institute, the most important part is academic and training. So, you should ask uh, what type of courses are offered in an institute. Currently, there are two types of courses like post-MBBS course and post-MS course, which, is, which are of six years and three years duration. If an institute offers both types of courses, then you should look for whether there is equity in the courses or not, or whether there is any discrimination in terms of training between the two different types mm -hmm. of courses. Even if there is discrimination in the terms of training, whether the evaluation is same or not. Okay. Like some institutes have exams at the end of five years for MBBS course, and uh, some institutes have at the end of six years. Mm -hmm. So the institute which has exam at the end of six years, they become at par with post MS course. So both finish exams and exit together. So in such type of institute, the training is likely to be equal between both the courses. Whereas if there is evaluation is not equal, training will also be different. So you should ask, is there any difference in training if you are a post MS candidate? And if you feel there is difference in training, you can opt for an institute which offers only post MS courses. And other things you should look in for in academics and uh, practices like how it is integrated with uh, clinical postings. Like an institute should not be exclusively academic. There should not be too much emphasis or exclusive emphasis on academics. It should be integrated well with uh, clinical work as well. And uh, then you should ask, uh, what are the academic programs the institute offers? Like examination throughout India comprises of case presentations, interpretation of radiological images, demonstrations uh, during surgery or demonstration of instruments, etc. So whether there are regular classes conducted for preoperative presentation, clinical case presentations, radiology interpretation seminars, journal clubs, etc. If uh, these are conducted, then uh, that institute is good. If this regular classes are not conducted what are the provisions made by the institute so that the students can learn so students will have idea if my institute is not conducting these classes whether I should go for any other extra online classes to enhance my knowledge on case presentation etc all right so what about a structured uh, mentorship or guidance system for residents as well so that is also equally important like traditionally surgical specialty has been mentor mentee relationship but nowadays in competitive era people write exams they come the professors don't get to choose the students, vice versa, students don't get to choose uh, professors. So you establish repo only after joining. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to know from the previous uh, alumni how good is the relationship of faculty and residents with each other, whether the faculties guide residents not only for their clinical work, academic and research, even for career, and even sometimes even for family and mm -hmm. post MCH care. Absolutely, sir. So what emphasis do you think residents should also give on surgical experience and hands-on training? So there are many popular institute, uh, but uh, when it comes to hands-on training, they are not as popular among the students. Though they may be doing large number of surgeries, because of the either of the profile of surgeries or profile of the patients, residents don't get to do themselves. Mm -hmm. So either professors or consultants do and residents merely assist or they are a second or third assistant as well. So you since you are joining a surgical specialty, the main emphasis should be on hands-on training. Mm -hmm. Rest of the things you can learn even outside your hospital, mm -hmm. but hands-on you cannot learn outside the hospital. So you should definitely look for how much uh, opportunity you get as a surgery resident. Okay. And do when do residents usually or typically start performing surgery? So that is very important question. Uh, 
like uh, you join as a senior resident when you have done ms general surgery but if your institute does not have lower cadre of uh, doctors like you don't have medical interns you don't have junior residents so these post ms candidates they have to work like junior residents and sometimes they have to work even up to one year 1.5 year as a junior resident and they don't go to ot regularly they just uh, give rounds write notes change dressings and uh, they start going to ot at the end of one and a half years of joining so this you should look Look for when you will be starting up to go to OT. Some institutes within first month of joining you will start to go to OT. Okay, all right. Do residents also have access to cadaveric dissection or simulation? So, if your uh, institute is not high volume uh, institute, then you should ask what are the alternatives available for hands on training. So, the alternatives currently cadaver lab is available. Mm. So, the medical college hospitals usually have anatomy department. It is not difficult to have a cadaver lab in a hospital which has a medical college attached to it. Whereas in standalone institutes, there may not be separate cadaver lab. Mm. And if it is there, you should ask whether it is easily accessible for the residents or is it used only for workshop for, or conferences for other residents. Okay, I see sir. So thank you for that as well. What about in terms of clinical workload and rotation? What is a typical neurosurgery <coughs> resident to expect? So neurosurgery is a very overwhelming specialty. It's not a nine to five job in uh, any typical uh, sector. So uh, as the name says that resident that means you have to live and die also in hospital probably so there are no fixed work hours but now with uh, current uh, new developments uh, emphasizing on work hour limitations you should ask for the work hours so typically the institutes nowadays have uh, 12 hour shifts or day shift more night shift etc but then again you should ask whether this shift system is only on papers sometimes the for namesake it is really like night shift which you feel it is 12 out of 24 hours mm -hmm. but you may have to stay for 16 hours because handover takeover pending work of the night shift you have to finish mm -hmm. so and some institutes have 36 hour shift sometimes even 60 hour shift mm -hmm. so you should ask whether uh, such type of shift systems are present or not and you should uh, intercept whether you will be able to perform such enduring long duty hours or not. I see that is really a point to think about and what about rotations in other allied fields as well? So uh, neurosurgery unlike general surgery like uh, Dr. Atul Gawande said there are two types of surgeons one are called breast surgeons and uh, one are like neurosurgeons. So breast surgeons are like just technical surgeons they don't do anything just cut and stitch whereas neurosurgeons is neurolog are neurological surgeons so they have to have rotation in neurology in radiology pathology and other allied specialties so they get overall knowledge of management of a patient not even not only the surgical skill so that you should look for whether rotations are provided and what resident benefits during rotation like you have, you have neurology rotation whether they are taught ne clinical neurology relevant to neurosurgery during radiology ro uh, neurology rotation during radiology rotation it is only diagnostic radiology or intervention neuroradiology so some institutes have radiology rotation but they will have only diagnostic radiology they will not have access to cath lab and your institutes do not have access to cath lab for neurosurgery residents so you should understand very clearly if you are going to join such institute you will not have any experience in endovascular uh, surgery so you may have to do additional training program after mch same thing applies about spine surgery like some institutes have ma mainly cranial surgery and very less spine surgery they do not have like minimally invasive spine surgery so again then you should be prepared that uh, your surgery training may not be complete and you may have to do some additional training after mch for doing spine surgeries so these are the things you should look for for rotations Okay, all right, sir. So in terms of research, what role does research or academic opportunities play? So thesis is uh, like mandatory for uh, doing MS or MD as a part of uh, curriculum by National Medical Council. But for MCH and DM thesis is not mandatory. Okay. However, certain institutes insist on doing thesis, even if it is not mandatory by the Medical Council. So when you have to do thesis, thesis takes a lot of your time, money, as well as effort because uh, there is a deadline for submission of protocol, deadline for submission of thesis. So your whole residency is centered around your thesis rather than surgical skill. So if you are not inclined towards academic and research too much, you should not uh, join an institute which has a lot of emphasis on thesis rather than on surgical training. 
Whereas if you are more inclined towards academic and research, you should look for whether there are allied specialty in that institute. Okay. Like if there is an institute with neurosurgery, they have neurochemistry, neurophysiology, neuropsychology, neuroradiology, and basic science uh, departments, so that you can do a lot of research in uh, such institute. Right. So there's wider opportunities as well. What about in terms of publishing or conferences? So again, uh, there are different tools in different universities, some mandate to publication, some mandate presentation, whereas some do not mandate. But it is desirable that uh, you should join an institute which encourages publication and uh, presentation in conferences because you get immense amount of experience by publishing and uh, presenting. One may think I have to do private practice, why should I publish or why should I uh, present in conference? But believe me, in private practice also nowadays, uh, people are judged not only by your surgical skill or the number of patients you can uh, capture, but also by how you present and uh, how you write. You have to write blogs when you are in private practice. You have to write articles in newspaper or some media. So if you're published and presented during your residency, this skills will also help you to build a private practice. Definitely. So it's important to be equipped with a lot of skills, even if you're looking at private practice. So how can residents, incoming residents, assess the faculty and mentorship that they would provide at an institution? So there should be a reciprocal system of uh, evaluating each other, like faculties evaluate uh, residents mm -hmm. and vice versa, residents also evaluate uh, faculties. Absolutely. However, uh, it does not happen most of the time. Yeah. The residents are evaluated, but faculties are not evaluated. So the evaluation system you should look for should be fair. You should ask whether it is evaluations, whether there is an evaluation system or not, if it is there, is it fair or not? Mm -hmm. What are the patterns of exam? How many exams you have to write? Whether the marks of each exam will be counted for your final exam, final degree, final medal or final award or something like that. And regarding evaluation of faculty, there should be a system in the institute where the candidates can give feedback about, uh, about the faculty mm -hmm. so that faculties also improve themselves. Now, what happens in most of the big institute faculties are good surgeons, excellent surgeons, mm -hmm. excellent researchers. They have a lot of publication, but they are not good teachers. So that is not translated to teaching. Mm -hmm. So students should give feedback like how a faculty should teach so that students get benefited maximum from it. Okay, all right. So, and um, how accessible would you say faculty members should be for surgical guidance or academic guidance? So, as I told you, resident means you have to stay in hospital. So, faculty should also be available round the clock, ideally, which is not possible. It is not uh, feasible. But uh, faculty should be uh, available as and when required, and not only for your clinical and surgical queries, but also for academic and research purpose because whole day you will be working in the wards and you will not get time for your thesis or research or something so faculty should be accessible even beyond office hours mm -hmm. so that you can improve on your research okay thank you sir so how do you think residents or what importance do you think residents should give on institutional culture well-being and work-life balance yeah so so far we have talked only about the department or neurosurgery but the department of neurosurgery is housed in a big institute mm -hmm. so how the institute works department will also work similarly so uh, there should be a student support network available in the institute because most of the students who join, join uh, neurosurgery they are old means they would have done mbbs then they would have appeared for entrance exam then they will go for bond again do ms again appear for entrance exam again go for bond so by the time they join neurosurgery they will be uh, more than 25 years sometimes nearly nearing 30s so this is the time you may get married sometimes you may be already having children by the time you join neurosurgery yeah. so you should look for work-life balance you should uh, ask whether enough leaves are given or not whether if you're like a woman like you should ask whether instead of woman friendly or not mm -hmm. so uh, you should also ask how many uh, students they are seeking mental health support, mm -hmm. whether it is so much uh, distressing during residency that they have to see mental health support. And if they have to seek whether the institute facilitated that or not. Mm -hmm. These all the things also you should look for. And besides that housing condition, like whether hostel is available or not, if you are married, married uh, couple quarters or hostels are available or not, mm -hmm. or whether you have to stay. Suppose if you are in a big city and hostel is not available, you have to stay outside, mm -hmm. which can be very expensive. So these are the other minor things you should look for. 
Absolutely. I think you raise a lot of great points here, sir. So going to our last question, what kind of career development opportunities or job opportunities await residents as they approach graduation? <clears throat> so typically when you join IIT or IIM, you don't think of placement. It is implied moment you join IIT, IIM, you will be placed very well at the end of your tenure. Yes. Even before completion of your tenure, you will be placed very well. But unfortunately, that does not happen in medical institutes. You start seeking jobs after you finish your MCH uh, or DNB neurosurgery. So this is also you should ask after completion of your training whether the residents get job easily or not or whether they have to undergo additional training like uh, during their three years they would not have operated enough and they might have to continue as a post MC senior resident in their own institute to get some more hands-on experience they would have missed on some aspect of neurosurgery and they may have to do fellowship if they have to do fellowship whether the institute facilitates their fellowship they give letters of recommendation or not whether the institute have MOU with foreign universities so that your their institute can do fellowship in other universities or not. All right. And what is a typical career pathway, do you think, after doing a residency in neurosurgery? So most of the uh, students, they will do private practice and handful of them will do academic uh, practice so that they should understand that not all will get in uh, academic institute mm -hmm. so they should be prepared to do private practice right from the day when they leave the institute okay thank you sir so do you have any final piece of advice to incoming residents as well so final piece of advice do not ask anything about the institute from the hod of that institute do not even ask to the person who has recently joined the institute because he hasn't seen anything typically ask a candidate who has finish the course and something like six months or 12 months after completion of course when she or he is doing a job so that fellow would have seen the entire residency system after that he would have seen whether uh, he is able to get job or not what type of job he has got after completion of residency and he is satisfied with the training and satisfied with the job he has got that's what i would like to say at the end Okay, thank you, sir. So thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your insights. And we hope that this conversation can bring some clarity about how to choose an institution for your neurosurgery residency. Thank, thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank you. Namaste.